Hey kids, I'm so excited to be here with you today once again for the Drayton Family Children's Educational Program. I'm coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, and I've invited some amazing musicians to come in and play for you today. We will also be watching some clips featuring the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra. This year's theme is Melody, Rhythm, and Harmony. But before we begin, just what instruments do make up the symphony orchestra? There are basically four sections to a symphony orchestra. There's the string section, which is the largest. There's the woodwinds, the brass, and the percussion, also known as the drums. Let's take a look at just the members of the string section. Just like there are four parts to an orchestra, there are four parts to the violin string family. These are the violin, the viola, which is a little larger than the violin, the cello, and the largest instrument is the bass. So just how do you make a sound on a string instrument? Well, you take a bow, you pull it across the strings, and the strings vibrate, and that's what makes the sound. My friend Liz is here to demonstrate that for you today. Man, Liz, that was great. Now that you've heard Liz play on one violin, let's listen to the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra, all the strings playing together. Let's talk about the woodwind section. The name woodwind actually comes from the fact that at one time all these instruments were made of wood. And you make the sound by blowing into a mouthpiece that has a reed in it or by blowing air over an open hole. So when you blow into the mouthpiece the reed vibrates and that's what makes the sound. Now let's look at all the different instruments that make up the woodwind section. The main instruments in the woodwind section are the piccolo, which is the instrument that can play the highest. The flutes, the oboes, the clarinets, and the bassoons. And today I have my friend Jimmy here and he's gonna demonstrate the clarinet for you. So what is interesting about the woodwind instruments is they all have holes to cover up to make the different notes. Same way in this recorder, there are holes and when you blow through it and the fingers cover up the holes to produce the different notes. Well, since so many of the woodwind instruments use the same fingerings, many times a woodwind player can play more than just one instrument. And they are called woodwind doublers for that reason. So today, my friend Jimmy will play again, acting as a woodwind doubler, and this time he's gonna be playing the flute for you. Hey Jimmy, man that was great. And now that you've heard Jimmy play the flute and the clarinet, let's listen to the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra entire woodwind section play. Let's talk about the brass instruments in the symphony orchestra. I bet you can know why they get the name brass, because they are made all out of brass. And they use a mouthpiece made of metal in order to make the sound by buzzing their lips in the mouthpiece, which goes into the horn to produce the sound. And as you can see, depending on the size of the instrument, there are several different sizes of mouthpieces. Now let's meet all the instruments in the brass section. 
The main instruments in the brass section are the trumpets, the French horns, the trombones, and the tuba. So now you've met the main instruments of the brass section in the orchestra. I have with me today an euphonium. An euphonium is like a small tuba, and it uses the same type of a mouthpiece as a trombone. And as I mentioned, the mouthpiece is what makes the sound. And without the instrument, this is what the mouthpiece sounds like when you buzz your lips in it. In the instrument, you can play music. Here's a little rendition of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Now let's hear the real brass players of the Laporte Symphony County Orchestra play all their instruments, and I bet you this is a song you're gonna really know. Now let's meet the instruments in the percussion section. There are many types of percussion instruments, and the word percussion means to hit or strike with your hand or with a stick or to even shake it. Here are the many different instruments within the percussion section. The main instruments in the percussion section in the orchestra are the snare drum, cymbals, bass drum, timpani, and mallet instruments such as the bells and xylophone. And now you saw the instruments of the percussion section, and today I'd like to demonstrate one of those instruments, the snare drum. Now, let's listen to the percussion section of the Laporte County Symphony Orchestra play right now. Now that we know all the instruments of the orchestra, let's talk about how they make music. Let's start with the word melody. Melody is a group of notes that, when played together, make a tune, and you can often hum the tune. The notes are not usually very high or very low. Here is an example of a very famous melody. Let's see if you recognize it. Now I'm sure most of you have heard that melody before. That was by a very famous composer called Mozart. Now here's another melody that I'm sure you will recognize. Well, I'm sure many of you recognize that melody. That's actually a tune called Heart and Soul, and piano players love to use that song to play duets. But what about movies? Do you think movies have melodies in them? Well, here, let me play one for you, and I bet you you'll recognize this. That, of course, was the theme from Harry Potter, and I'm sure almost all of you recognize that. I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of these melodies also have rhythms. So let's take a minute to discuss rhythm. So we've already discussed the main instruments in the percussion section, but there are a lot of instruments that the percussion players get to play, and we call these toys. And I brought a few of these toys here today to show you some of the rhythms that they can do. The first one is the gyro. This is the tambourine.
and here's the triangle. So you heard some rhythm on some of the percussion toys, but what's the best instrument that can demonstrate rhythm? The drum set, of course. I'm going to demonstrate three types of rhythms for you, one right after the other. The first one will be a jazz swing rhythm. The next one will be a Latin bossa nova rhythm. And then the third one will be a funk rock rhythm. When you take the melody and add some rhythm and harmony to it, you have a song. And that is how music is created. But sometimes the rhythm can also be the melody. I know that might sound a little weird, but check out this video I did last year of a piece called The Typewriter. And as you watch it, listen to the typewriter playing the rhythm as the melody. Each year, I get really nice thank you notes from you guys. And last year, most of you commented that the typewriter was your favorite piece. So I'm excited that you got to see that again. Now that we've discussed melody and rhythm, let's talk about one of my favorite things, and that's harmony. Earlier, I played the melody to Heart and Soul. Now let's listen to the harmony of Heart and Soul. So when you take the melody and add the harmony, you now have a song. So here is Heart and Soul again, this time playing the melody and the harmony at the same time. So you probably noticed that when playing a melody, I was playing one note at a time. Harmony really means two or more notes played together, and that's what creates the harmony to the music. So far, I've been using the piano to demonstrate all the harmony for you. 
But did you know other instruments can play harmony? One of those instruments is a violin. A violin can play two or three strings at the same time with the bow. Here is my friend Liz again to demonstrate that for you. Bet you didn't know a violin could do that. What other instruments can play harmony? How about a guitar? Well, here is my friend Rock playing the guitar, playing chords that make up the harmony for you. One instrument that is like the guitar that can play chords is the ukulele. Here's my friend Rock again to demonstrate the ukulele for you. Even percussion instruments can play chords. Because the mallet instruments are built like the piano, they can play more than one note at a time. So here I will demonstrate the harmony to heart and soul like I played before, but this time I'll be playing it on the xylophone. This next section is going to be fun and interesting. I'm going to show you how you can keep the same melody but change the harmony and even though the melody is the same, the song will sound different. I'm going to use the theme and the melody to the movie Rocky and I'm going to show you first the fast section. Now that you know the theme to Rocky, let's change the harmony and the rhythm and see what happens. Be sure to notice that the melody doesn't really change. Didn't that feel really different even though the melody pretty much stayed the same? Now let's watch the actual movie clip from Rocky demonstrating the faster harmonies that I did earlier on the piano. So that was an exciting scene, so of course the harmony had to be exciting. So let's watch a different scene from the movie Rocky that is a little sad. Even though the melody will be the same, watch how the harmony has been changed to make you feel something different. So you see how it's the harmony that actually makes you feel different because the melody was pretty much the same. So to demonstrate this even more, what would happen if those scenes were switched? Let's watch the fast paced action scene but with the wrong music.
So obviously that didn't work out very well. What if we switched it? What if we had the sad hospital scene, but the harmony that goes to the melody from the theme was done in the fast way? So let's do this the right way. Let's watch a longer clip. And in this clip, there are no sound effects and there are no dialogue. But I've also taken out the music. So just watch this longer clip and see just how boring it is without the music. So as you watch this scene, as I mentioned, there's really no dialogue and there are no sound effects. Here is a person who is getting ready to try to fly for the very first time. This is in Africa. So as the plane is coming up, you can see the beautiful scenery. But again, without music, this, this does not make sense. Adding music here obviously would make us feel the emotion of the people in the plane as they're flying over all this beautiful scenery. As you can feel and tell, there's nothing exciting. It doesn't feel beautiful, even though it looks great. Again, because you have no music, to help you feel those emotions that go along with this movie clip. All right, I think what we're going to do is stop it here because without the music, this is very boring. Now let's watch that same clip again, but this time the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra will be playing music to it that I wrote for the scene. Be sure to watch and listen to how much more exciting the music makes this film clip.
Let's discuss now how the different ways we can put rhythm and harmonies together that can create different moods and emotions. I'm going to play the piano four songs and see how each tune can make you feel different. I'm sure from listening to those tunes that each one made you feel something a little bit different. Last year we did a fun piece with the orchestra to try to determine the moods and emotions of the music that is being played. I had a student come up onto the stage to determine if he could figure out what this orchestra was playing. Here's a clip featuring the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra and the student Michaela. So these represent marching, Here's a wig for the rock, baseball. Okay, so we're gonna practice this. So first one we're gonna do is a baseball. So when you hear the orchestra play baseball type music, you're gonna put on the hat and swing the bat, okay? So we're gonna practice that one, ready? When you hear this music, put it on, and then you help them out by baseball, right? So here we go. Pick up to the six, eight. <laughs> There's that, that's baseball. So when you hear music that sounds like baseball, if he doesn't know which one to do, you make sure you help him out. Second one we're gonna do is a march. When he hears music that sounds like a march, he's gonna put on this marching hat and he's gonna march playing his trumpet. So here's the march. Here's what a march would sound like. Pickups. <laughs> Great, okay, there's the march. Here's the third style we're gonna do. This is the cowboy music. Can you figure out what to do? And there we go, all right, cowboy music. Ready, and. And then we have our fourth one. This is rock music. When you hear rock music, put on the... There you go. And the guitar. Okay, ready? Now you're gonna be playing to the audience. Here we go. Two, three, and... rock music all right all right now here's where the fun begins we're not going to tell him what we're playing he's just going to have to figure it out there's something for his head and something for his hands on all four of these styles baseball marching rock or cowboy are you ready Baseball, baseball. 
These next scenes are going to be featuring the guest artists that I brought in today to share their music with you. You already heard Liz playing the violin to show you a melody and how it can play chords. Now let's watch Liz turn the violin into a country fiddle. Now let's use Liz again on the violin and bring in the other friends to play background music with her and we're going to do a nice classical piece for you. The next piece of short music we want to demonstrate for you today is in the style of Dixieland. So here is Jimmy on his clarinet. Our last piece for you today will be a song in the style of blues and will feature Jimmy on the tenor saxophone. I'd like to thank the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra for asking me again to be a part of the Drayton Family Children's Educational Program. You saw today the three elements that make up music, the melody, the rhythm, and the harmony. But more importantly, you found out how music actually makes you feel. Music is all around us. 
If you're not involved in music yet, I hope you find the time someday to get involved. Being in music is very magical, and you will not be disappointed. I'd like to thank my friends for joining me today. We had Liz and Rock and Jimmy. We had such a great time playing music for you, and we hope you liked it. Be sure to watch the end credits after we are done, as there is a video from a couple years ago where a student from the audience came on stage named Riley to conduct the orchestra. It's a pretty fun video. So we hope you had a great time, and we'll see you next year. So they're going to follow you, and what you're going to do is we're going to have the drum. The drums will do a roll-off, and that'll kick them in, and then you conduct them. Are you ready? Okay. When you're ready, point to the drummer, and he'll kick you off. Wait, 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 wait. What happened? They're not playing. Come on, try it again. Try it again. All right, stop. What do you suppose she's missing? Oh, you need the magic wand. This is what makes them play. So this is for yours to keep. Now that you've got the magic wand, let's see if it works, okay? Oh great, I'm glad you're still there, because I got to thinking. I couldn't be with you this year, but one of the things I was going to do was I was going to play the piano upside down on the stage for you. So since I couldn't be there, I thought maybe I would do that for you here. So give me just a second. Well, wait, actually, I'm coming back next year. So make sure you come back next year and I'll play the piano upside down for you.